Hello YouTubers, Joe Kersey here on Thursday, June 12, 2014 at 17.06 Eastern Daylight Time. Now, uh, today actually hasn't been too bad a day, uh, all things considered. Uh, briefly, uh, the day started off by uh, me uh, watching uh, the featured group at the U.S. Open. The first featured group at the U.S. Open that was available on the Internet. And uh, it was Phil Mickelson and Justin Rose, who won last year, and this uh, U.S. Amateur and British Open Amateur Champion, uh, Matthew Fitzpatrick. Uh, he had, uh, he's an amateur, he had, uh, not, he's an amateur this week, now next week he's turning pro, uh, he, he went one semester to Northwestern and decided, I don't need to go, I don't need no education, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to go play professional golf, and, uh, so that's what he decided to do, he's, I guess he signed with an agent, so he's playing this as an amateur, which, which was probably a very tactical mistake because, uh, you know, he's, he's clearly going to finish in the money. <laughs> you know, he could have made, you know, probably about $100,000 off, off, off this. But anyway, so he's playing as an amateur. But next week he turns pro and he's going to play as a pro in the Irish Open here next week, apparently. So He's just cuter than a bug. I hope you fuck the Oh, well, it'd be great if you want. I mean, it'd be great if you want. You know, well, and indeed, you know, and all the pros were treating him very nicely because they knew that he wasn't any threat to their income. So no matter how well he does, it's, it's not going to affect their income. It's not going to, not going to cut into their cut of the tape. So. so it was fun to watch that. And I sat around, you know, watched the better part of that photo oh, around... Well, I was click. I was doing other things, obviously, but I'd click away and I'd come back. And, uh, what's that's about one, and then uh, about one ten, this uh, service guy for the washing machine called and said he'll be up about an hour. No, he called it. Uh, he called just a hair before noon. He said be up about an hour, and so at one ten he arrived and. Uh, uh, and this 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 guy was good. I mean, this guy was good. You know, I mean, you can tell. First of all, he first thing he says out of the truck is, you know, he says, "Well, I I had told the people to leave a note saying this was a fairly obscure driveway to find." He says, "He says, obscure doesn't even begin to cover it." <laughs> I said, "I assume you had to make more than one pass to find the place." He said, "Yeah." He said, "I went I went past at least one. I went." Passed it, and then when I got down to Africa Road, I realized I'd gone too far, so I turned around, and came back. So I had to make, I only had to make one extra pass at it, which is an improvement on some folks. But you know, because some folks even go to the wrong county. But he, that wasn't the case with this guy. So we go down to the scene of the crime and look at the victim and. Uh, in the basement, you know, the washing machine, and uh, apparently, now this is very interesting, and I thought this might be the case, uh, and he demonstrated, uh, he said he was going to tell me the secret code, but he didn't. Uh, there's a thing you can click through the various settings on the, uh, on, on, on the mode dial, you know, heavy, well, yeah, the heavy, the heavy, the regular, the delicate to this, the click, the intermediate clicks, you know, all those intermediate clicks, by the way, Paul, are basically, like, work in a safe combination. Well, like, 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 you know, they're, they're basically so they can work, work it like a safe combination, and then, you know, punch, by punching in the start, stop, pause button, you know, you know, it's, it's like computer code, you know, so, um. So we got this thing to do all sorts of things that, you know, it wasn't doing the other day. Uh, except the one thing it wouldn't do would be to have consistently, you know, to consistently have the, uh, the door lock 
either lock or unlock properly. <clears throat> so, having ascertained that, you know, he, he took the thing apart enough to replace the door lock. Uh, which involved, you know, going in the back a bit and then, of course, underneath, you know, the lid and this, you know, this sort of thing. And um, so he placed that and then he went through the usual, you know, then he, then he worked, worked the secret magic again. Click, 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 click you know, punch. Click. You know, and then there was a lot of listening to see what sounds the thing made, you know, did it. Did it hum? Did it buzz? Did something not hum and buzz? It was humming and buzzing before. Just that, clue. that sort of thing. And he says, well, the door lock hum is gone. He says, but there's still something else there. He says, it's probably the actuator. So, you know, tilt thing up and he goes out and he gets a new actuator and he goes in and he's going up and this, that, and the other. And he's got he's got all sorts of little LED lights he can park underneath to illuminate his work site. It's all very spiffy. And, uh, you know, he, he had done some sort of computer analysis, but he had to go back out into the driveway because he couldn't get a signal from the basement. And uh, so when all was said and done, he, you know, he, he takes out this thing called an actuator. Now, you know, it, I, I, I can't show it to you because he had to take that part back, but he left me the old door lock, which there's no interest in showing you that. But uh, this thing looked like, it was, well, it was no, it was no bigger than, than, it was no bigger than an eight and a half, 11 sheet of paper. In fact, considerably smaller, I'd say about half the size of that. You know, half the size of half a sheet of eight and a half by eleven paper, and uh, it was a little rectangular thing, and it's got like a little semi. It's like a like a a quarter of a circle thing that goes hither thither, you know, back and forth, and it's actuated by solenoids and sensors and things, and uh, <coughs> it's got. It's got a little motor that moves it underneath, and he says that's that takes the place of a transmission. He says that's what is the equivalent of a transmission nowadays in these washing machines. I said, oh, okay, and uh, and I saw that I said that, you know he, I said can I look at the part? And I mean, yeah, you know, and so he's working away, and I'm looking for. He says this is this, this the motor. He says that's not the that's not the actual motor. He says oh no no no. He says this is. This just moves things around so that then the thing can cycle through the way it's supposed to cycle. Okay. So he replaced that and put everything back together, and then he turns the thing on and listening, 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 listening. And, and the thing starts to work properly. And he says, now he says, he says, now look, he says. You know, he says, i got to turn the water on for this. And he turned the water, and they started. And then he says, listen, 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 listen. He says, so this thing starts to run through an entire wash cycle. He says, oh, look, he says, don't, don't interrupt this. Don't interrupt this. He says, this thing is learn, learning how to be a washing machine. Uh, good. Learning how to be a washing machine again. And uh, I said, okay, that's fine. So the the thing ran through, and so we'll we'll find out we'll find out. I mean, I've got about four loads of clothes now to do. Paul says he wants to redo some stuff. So yeah, because the damn wash is set there and soaked. Yeah. Well. Anyway. So well, now you got your chance to find out. Um, it seems that uh, no, let's just say let's just say that I have a very damp basement. And uh, it seems that perhaps this particular product's electronics and parts aren't <clears throat> built to withstand a damp environment, which is kind of odd because, you know, you think about it, most laundry rooms are kind of damp anyway. 
you know, the one thing he did say that was concrete about these parts is he says they're just too fra they're just too fragile. They're not they're not robust enough. Just, you know, he says leaving aside the electronics, they're just they're just not robust enough. <clears throat> so uh, it was under warranty. Otherwise, it would have been around just a hair under two hundred fifty dollars. And uh, so that was that was my that was my service adventure today after my wonderful golf watching morning. And then, you know, you know, just as I was getting ready to sit down and make this, Paul came home, and so I delayed making this, and he brought home some potato salad and what was it, potato salad? And sour, no, oh, it was coleslaw. Coleslaw, coleslaw. and, and, and potato crowd. salad from some, wow. some human resources, i.e. personnel meeting that they had today at the hotel, so. Uh, so that that was that was today's adventure and just carrying on. Well, so right now what I've got going on down in the basement is I've got the big red four thousand watt heater on, which I'm going to run for about five days and try to get this place dried out a bit. And uh, <clears throat> obviously I can't leave that on all the time. You know, I'd, it would bankrupt me. Um, I can leave. I can leave uh, sort of a fan on down there all the time. You know, that's I can I can afford that. And then I can afford to run. Uh, it's like a 500 watt heater, just sort of pointed at this washing machine's innards, uh, pretty much all the time too, if I have to. And then uh, during the summer, I run the dehumidifier down there anyway when it's, you know sort of warm enough down there that it does any good, but we'll see what happens on that. I, I'm not, I, I don't hold out much hope for that to do much good when, when the temperature down there is much below 63, 64, so. <clears throat> Excuse me. We'll see. Uh, otherwise, I guess I'm going to have to eat like about a $250 repair every year on this thing. So, I mean, short of that, I don't have to buy a commercial grade washing machine. I'm not going to do that. So. Uh, you know, I can't afford to have this thing put up here on the first, you know, on the, on the, on the, on the floor, you know, the, the non-basement floor. I have a one store. I'm, you know, the guy says, you don't, you don't want to put anything up, up. Up where you live, he says, if something goes wrong, it just devastates the place, and he's absolutely right. So I'm, you know, you know either it works down there or it doesn't, and then that'll, if it doesn't, then I'll have to deal with it. So. Fair enough. So that's Joe's life lesson for today. And so on that note, I'm going to say bye bye, YouTubers. <laughs>